Our first guest tonight has been a staunch supporter of President Trump in the House. Joining me now, Congressman Andy Biggs, Chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, also a member of the House Judiciary Committee, co-chair of the Border Security uh, Caucus. Congressman, great to see you. If the president is such an imminent threat, as Pelosi has been claiming now for months, which is why she had to rush through the articles of impeachment, then her halting the process unilaterally seems to make no sense, unless, of course, she was just lying all along, which is my bet. What do you think? Well, you know, you're, you're right on. I mean, look at it. She herself said they've been trying to impeach President Trump for two and a half years. And then all of a sudden, uh, at the end of September, she said, oh, we've got to do this. It's a, it's a critical uh, thing. It's an emergency. We've got to get this done before the election or else he'll steal the election. And for her to come out and hold the, the articles and not transmit them to the Senate, you know what, as if that's going to give her leverage, it's not going to give her leverage. It's just making her look bad. It's, it, it, quite frankly, it's, it's a bad faith move on her part. It's bad faith all the way, but that's consistent with everything we've seen for more than three years, Greg. You know, I, I want to talk to you about Lisa Murkowski, you know, who seems disturbed, she says, uh, that Mitch McConnell would actually coordinate with the White House. Um, she's apparently oblivious to the fact that in 1999, then-Democrat leader Tom Daschle coordinated closely with the Clinton White House. He admits it. That's a matter of record. Um, I wouldn't expect Lisa Murkowski to know it because, you know, it's Lisa Murkowski, and she wasn't paying attention back then when her dad held her seat. What do you make of her? Well, it's it, to me, it's what's disturbing is that she's uh, voicing uh, this disconnect with with uh, the majority leader, because the reality is, and I'll tell you this, Greg, Republicans, we give so much. We give in all the time. We we're the genteel party. And I tell you what we need to be doing right now. We need to be fighting tooth and nail because the Democrats have basically emasculated the Constitution, the rules of the institution itself of the House and the Senate for the last uh, three years. And so I find it intriguing that somebody would say, I'm disturbed that there's been some coordination or discussion going on, when, as you say, consistently and with, by precedent, that's the norm. And so I don't think there should be a problem there. I don't know what her problem really is. Uh, I will tell you that you get folks like Bill Kristol out there going after these, yeah. uh, these people. That's a problem. That's a real problem. Well, she's got lots of problems. Chuck Schumer, speaking of problems, is now demanding that witnesses be called. Apparently, he's been stricken with a case of amnesia <laughs> since he argued against witnesses being called back in 1999 in the Clinton impeachment. Isn't this just... You know, rank hypocrisy from the king of hypocrisy himself, Schumer? Oh, absolutely. I, I was listening to one of his statements that he made uh, earlier this week, and I thought, you know what? This guy is just uh, able to go back and forth as, as, his, uh, as the wind blows, and that's what we're seeing here. The reality is the Republicans were denied due process with the president and all of the American people in the House. And uh, they're going to be given their process, the Democrats are, by getting to present their case that they brought about by a flawed process. And for Schumer to be railing on this after he took the exact opposite position 20 years ago is uh, the height of hypocrisy. But that's what we've come to expect. There was no bipartisan support for impeachment in the House. But now there appears to be a potentially some bipartisan support to acquit in the Senate, you may peel off two or three Democrats, including Joe Manchin of West Virginia, uh, Doug Jones of Alabama, maybe even Kristen Sinema out in Arizona. How do you handicap it? Um, I think you might get one or two. I wouldn't expect more than that. I think I think people like uh, Kirsten Sinema is, is in a, a, a and some of these folks they're in a tough bind. They they run as moderates. Uh, they actually vote a lot of times as moderates, but their base. Uh, the party is or their base of their voters is basically the, the Republicans and conservatives with right leaning independents. So it's a real, a real tough case for them. And so you might see some of them flip over. What about a motion to dismiss for lack of evidence uh, that the Senate might consider? Uh, I know you're in the House, but would you favor something like that at least to be considered? 
Well, I, I, I wouldn't, and I'll tell you why. I think you have to let the, the, the sham go on. I think you need to let the Democrats come over. They're going to try to dust off things that they didn't bring in the House, but you have to let us, the world, uh, one more time before you eliminate this, you got to let the world see what a big sham this is. Right. I, you know, I, I think you're right. Andy Biggs, as always, great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Greg. Good to be with you.